hi guys it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times I believe we made it to Saturday August 29th 2015 here in Southeast Colorado on Highway 69 between Gardner and West Cliff on my way to Salada Colorado today this is your old Doomsday hypocrite tourist coming at you from his brand new gas sucking truck, which I bought two days ago in Austin, Texas. And so I think I'm going to send this. Not exactly eating crow rant. What kind of rant is this? Whatever kind of rant is this, I'm going to send this out. To my old buddy Birdman, uh, I had to mention Birdman here a time or two on Humpy Dumpy Tribe. Birdman is not so when I talk about my clueless moron friends. He is not one of my clueless moron friends. He is very clued in. Was a firm supporter of the collapse and fall of global industrial civilization even before I was. And he and I didn't speak uh, for several years after I sold my gas sucking truck in March of 2009. I got all high you're mightier than thou about how I was saving the planet by getting rid of my gas sucking truck and while he was driving around pretending like he's an Indian and talking about grandfather and with all of his uh, Native American bumper stickers all over his gas truck all over his gas truck and suck you know, I asked him what grandfather would think about that. He didn't like that comment. We didn't speak for a few years, but we are back on good terms. And he has still got his gas sucking truck. He has an eight cylinder monster truck. I got my little four cylinder Tacoma and it's doing me just fine. My little four cylinder Tacoma. But anyway, I was visiting I was visiting Birdman a couple of weeks ago. I hadn't seen him in about a year. <clears throat> and we were riding around in his monster truck. Which, of course, he came. I was hitchhiking at that point. Uh, since there was no bus where I needed to get. And so he picked me up. And we kind of had a laugh about our little our little scuffle that we had about gas sucking trucks when I told him that I was on my way to Austin, Texas to uh, buy my own gas sucking truck and uh, here's what he told me uh, he goes Sambo he goes, he goes it's like this uh, he, he doesn't, he's never listened to one of my videos in his life because he says I'm just preaching to the choir. But anyway, he goes, Hambone, it's like this. He, he goes, I understand completely and I agree with you 100%. 100% that the fossil fuel powered <coughs> internal infernal combustion engine was the single biggest tragedy ever to come along in the history of this planet and he fully understands that the the carnage that the internal combustion engine 
is doing to this planet. He said, but you know what? He was living, he lives out in Sebastopol, California. He goes, I could get in my truck and I could drive from here to Canada. And you know what? It would hardly cross my mind the whole time. Well, guys, I started out of Austin, Texas 1,000 miles ago. 900 and something miles ago yesterday and you know what in the past thousand miles in my new gas sucking truck uh, it has crossed my mind a couple of times about how this internal combustion engine this little four-cylinder putt-putt is part of the problem that my consumer and lifestyle choices to return to the gas sucking truck after a six and a half year absence not counting a little one day blip back in May which we won't talk about uh, you know what it's I've probably thought about it for about maybe 20 minutes for the simple reason that I love my gas second truck and there is a thing that I'm only gonna I'm 90% sure we'll see if I end up eating these words I'm only gonna have this truck for about two months and then I'm gonna sell it out in California uh, for two thousand dollars more than I paid for it uh, so I'm hoping that it'll just give me something to drive around in so I can make some more money out in California this fall cause to the line of work that I want to be in in Northern California in the fall without a gas sucking truck you don't have a job in the industry so, but at the end of the season, I plan to sell this gas sucking truck to someone else and head to St. Croix. But we'll see about how all that. So, anyway, yes, sir, your old eco hypocrite is back behind the wheel. And uh, I, I gotta say, guys. And this is just one more reason that I am completely hopeless about the state of this planet is because I absolutely love being behind the wheel of this gas sucking truck. I fully admit my addiction to fossil fuels. My addiction, everyone in this country's addiction, everyone on this planet's addiction. And you know, since I ate the five grams of mushrooms back in 2008 and pulled my head out of my ass and understood what's going on on this planet and ended up reducing my carbon footprint by about 90%, although I just raised it back up about 50% two days ago. Uh, in hindsight, I tell you what, uh, I have missed this gas sucking truck more than I've missed everything else I gave up. I miss it a hell of a lot more than my four bedroom, three bedroom, three bathroom McMansion on the green belt in South Austin, Texas with the two car garage so full of shit that I couldn't park my gas sucking truck or my gas sucking car in it. Uh, I miss this truck a hell of a lot more than that house. I miss this truck a hell of a lot more than the whatever it was I made in 2008, the $113,000 income I made in 2008. Uh, I missed my hands around this wheel more than that. 
I, what else did I give up in 2008? I've, I missed this truck a hell of a lot more than I miss sex. I'm telling you, it's, it, it, it's, it's nicer to be back in the saddle of this truck and then it would be to be back in the saddle on top of some good looking woman in the sack. That's how addicted to this shit I am. Uh, I miss this gas sucking truck more than everything else that I gave up. Hands down, bar none. And of course, maybe I'll actually have a chance to get back in the saddle with a good-looking woman now that I have a gas-sucking truck back in my life. There is this guy I was talking to a couple of months ago, South Austin. He was, he went carless for seven years. He made it six more months than I did before he fell back off the wagon. And he goes, yeah, uh, seven years without a car. And he goes, I actually had two dates. You know, that was his joke, meaning no car, no pissy. It's pretty much that simple. Uh, no car, no pissy. There is a direct connection between that. The, uh, the, the single quickest way to get women out of your life, guys, more than being homeless, more than being unemployed. If you want to guarantee celibacy in your life, get rid of your gas sucking car and you will be getting sex out of your life. So we'll see if uh, getting this uh, gas sucking truck is going to have any ripple knock on effects along those lines. Although, I mean, it's not something I'm actively working towards, but it won't hurt my chances either. Okay, and so this is why I am so hopeless that uh, that I am not a clueless moron uh, about what's going on on this planet and what this gas sucking truck is doing to this planet any more than my buddy Birdman is is clueless about what his eight cylinder monster truck. is doing to this planet. And so here we are. We are two eco Nazis cheering on the collapse and fall of global industrial civilization, cheering on the end of the fossil fuel era. But guess what? We're, we're going to be riding, driving these gas sucking trucks right up to the very last day. So the last gas pump dies and uh, you know I mean if, if I fall it off the wagon if I'm driving one of these damn things if Birdman's driving one of these damn things I know damn well that Derek Jensen uh, drives a gas sucking car I know that James Howard Kunstler drives a gas sucking car I know that uh, Guy McPherson drives a gas sucking. Well, guys might be an electric car. I know that Richard Heinberg still drives a car. So I guess I'm in good company. I assume if Jesus were around, that he'd be driving a gas sucking car. It's, you know, it beats the hell out of riding around on the back of a donkey. What would Jesus do? He'd buy a gas sucking car. I'm not kidding myself. You know? So yes, with the full knowledge of what this gas sucking truck is doing to this planet. Uh, you know? I've got my mental health to consider. And now we're going to get back to the rationalizations, which in no way uh, excuses my behavior in my decision. But th these are some of the rationalizations. And even though I, 
understand their rationalizations, they are very true rationalizations. And if you haven't heard them, that maybe you've used these own rationalizations in your own life. If you're an eco-Nazi like me, still driving a gas-sucking truck or gas-sucking car, number one, okay, if I had not bought this gas-sucking truck from the person I bought it from, somebody else would have bought this gas-sucking truck. This gas-sucking truck would be riding down the road whether I was behind the wheel of it or somebody else. Rationalization number one. Okay, I'm going to send this one out to my old buddy Gavloft, who loves to poke me. He was actually poking me not so much about the truck, but about flying in an airplane. Okay, because I had to take an airplane from California to Texas to pick up the gas-sucking truck so I could drive it back from Texas to California where I'm going to sell it so I can get back on a gas-sucking airplane to get back to Texas where I bought the gas-sucking truck in the first place so I can then, after selling some Christmas trees, take a plane to St. Croix where at least I won't have a gas-sucking truck in St. Croix. But anyway, okay, Gavloff to anyone else who wants to talk about people who fly airplanes. True statement. If I had not been on that airplane, if yours truly had not bought a ticket on that airplane, the airplane would have taken off without me. So on one way of looking at it, it would have been less efficient because there would have been one last person splitting the gas on the airplane. It makes zero difference whether I am on the airplane or not on the airplane. The plane was going, and the plane will be going in November, and the plane will be going to St. Croix, and the plane will be flying back to St. Croix, and the number of airplanes in the air is expected to pretty much double between now and 2050. The number one reason for this is the rise of China, which we will now talk about. Okay, we'll start with myself. To continue the airplane analogy, we're taking it onto the truck. This is my A, rationalization, but B, completely true, uh, undebatable rationalization. Okay. If I do or do not drive a gas sucking car or truck, it will make zero difference to the fate of this planet zero difference whether yours truly is uh, is or is not driving a gas sucking truck and flying on airplanes true statement B true statement if every single human being in the United States of America and I would say every single human being uh, outside of China and India stopped driving gas-sucking cars and riding on airplanes. If everybody on planet Earth outside of the countries of China and India died today and had a carbon footprint of zero, if the United States, every other country other than China and India, 
had a carbon footprint of zero beginning tomorrow. It, well, that would make a little bit of difference to the uh, fate of the planet, but not much. China and India, with no help from the rest of the planet, will take down this planet and every earthling we share this planet with, with no help from the rest of the planet. They owe the ability to do this to the United States of America. We are the ones who gave them the tools. Richard Aldhouse Dixon I can probably be credited more than any single individual for the rise of China uh, taking down a planet. So these are all true statements. This does not in any way, shape, or form uh, excuse my inexcusable decision for buying this gas sucking truck or for getting on gas sucking airplanes or for continuing to eat pork and chicken. However, they are all true statements. The situation is now hopeless. It is 100% completely hopeless. There is no hope for this planet. I have two choices for the rest of my little puny little wretched miserable life. I can spend it. I can choose to spend it not owning a gas sucking car and depending on the public transportation system in the United States of America to get me where I want to go and never to get on an airplane again, which means I will never go anywhere you can only reach by air again in my life, which would be include the continents of South America and Australia, and if you live in the Western Hemisphere, uh, Europe, Asia, and Africa, or any place in the Caribbean or Hawaii, I, I can choose to make that decision for the rest of my life and make myself miserable and be depressed uh, watching all the other eco-Nazis, such as Derek Jensen, continue to go right on driving their gas-sucking cars. Or I can just throw in the towel and continue driving my little gas, my little four-cylinder gas-sucking trucks. And as of right now, for the next couple of months at least, that is the decision your old eco-Nazi is going to make. I just want to wrap up this uh, rant with this sign because I'm coming into this little, uh, I don't know, is it Amish or Mennonite community here in... Uh, Colorado. I cannot think of a better way to wrap up this rant on this spectacularly gorgeous day in the end times than with this caution sign. There you go. Caution horse and buggy crossing the road. I love it. I love it. Your old eco-tourist trying not to hit some Amish person on a horse and buggy with my 
brand new gas sucking truck with the Rocky Mountains in the background. You gotta love it. I want to get a picture of my gas sucking truck and the horse and buggy crossing sign. There you go. I love it. My gas sucking truck getting ready to run over a horse and buggy. This is your old eco hypocrite. Eco Nazi tourist from Texas saying Smoke them if you got them, guys. There's eco-Nazis and gas-sucking trucks running over Amish people and horses and buggies. I can't think of a better way. Better comment on the end times than that. Bye, guys.